Well, hello, Scrappers. Mike here. Welcome back to my channel, and welcome to part two of me processing the solids from my stock pot. Back in part one, which I'll put a link to in the upper right, um, I talked about the stock pot, how it works. Basically, talked a little bit about my whole waste disposal system, liquid waste disposal system. And then we uh, siphoned off the liquid in the stock pot, got the solids out of it, rinsed it a few times with some muriatic acid, let all the fine solids settle to the bottom, collected them on a uh, filter, and then incinerated this stuff in my home-built compelling oven. And what we're left with is this little bit of solids right here. So first thing I want to do before we get started with any further processing is find out just how much material we have here. Let me tear this. Oops. I found my little artist paint brushes that I was looking for in that last video. Oops. Some of this stuff is pretty well cemented into the bottom of... Oh, it's coming out. Okay. Get this little chunker in there. more of this stuff out of here. It didn't seem like it was centered all that well in here, but I guess just on top was pretty loose. I'm going to have to scrape this a little bit more, I think, to make sure I get it all out. I don't think we'll quite make 30 grams, though. Let me uh, find something to scrape this with. Yeah, there's a few places where it seems to be stuck down to the uh, bottom of the melt dish here. A few chunks. I'm going to have to grind this up into a fine powder to process it. So what do we got here? 27.34 grams. Okay. Boy, wouldn't it be great if that was all gold? Probably not, but wouldn't it be great? Okay, so I need to um, break this stuff up into a fine powder, grind it up. So let me find my mortar and pestle, and we'll do that. All right, so let's uh, break this stuff up, grind it into a fine powder. Before I try to further process it, increase its surface area here. This will make it much easier for the next few steps in the process if this is much more finely divided. Surface area is the name of the game here. I'm not going to get too anal about it, but I do want it broken up pretty well. And here's a little trick for you. Shake the material, and the bigger clumps will always come to the top, and that will give you some idea just how good your grinding action is. There's actually a name for that um, phenomenon where if you shake um, a container full of solids of mixed sizes, the big stuff always winds up in top, on top. I don't remember what the name of that phenomenon is, but it'll help you out here. Shake this a little bit. You see the big parts up on top and give them a little bit more of a grind. But this is looking pretty good. This is looking pretty fine. This would probably go through a... Uh, 20 or 30 mesh screen now, and I don't think it needs to really be much finer than that. I just don't want any big clumps. So let me find a beaker to put this in so we can go on to further processing. All right, I've got a two liter tall form beaker here. And the reason I am using a tall form beaker is to help 
lessen the uh, chance of boilovers. Notice I said lessen, not eliminate. Going to have to be careful here. Get all of this wonderful pine powder out of here. You know, this was a very black powder. Now it's a very gray powder. So we've actually oxidized some stuff in here. Probably oxidized, well, the iridium, like I was talking about in the last video. Since I'm more or less following Hoke's method from her book here, she says the iridium needs to be oxidized in your muffle furnace, or in my case, in my capelling furnace. And it should also oxidize some of the palladium. So we'll see what we've got in here. I don't know exactly how much we have in the way of platinum group metals in this stuff. Like I said in the last video, job one here is to get the gold. I know there's going to be some gold in here. But as for the platinum group metals, I don't know if there's enough to bother with. The last few times I've processed my stock pot, there wasn't enough to bother with, and I just put everything back in the stock pot. But it's been accumulating. So now there might be enough to make it worthwhile to go after. I don't know. Let's find out. Let's get this into the fume hood and move on to the next step in the process. All right, so now we got this stuff in the fume hood. Let me put some distilled water on it. Or actually, in this case, purified water. They don't have any distilled water. It's a little hard to come by again around here. I don't know why there keeps being shortages of it, but I have found that this Publix deionized water works really well. There doesn't seem to be any chloride in it. All right, and then we're going to put some nitric acid in here. And what is the purpose of this, you're asking yourself? Well, we get the fume hood going. Well, this is going to remove any remaining copper. A little bit of nitric acid in there. I can always add more. Now I'll put some heat to this. And we'll get this warmed up and see if we can extract any more copper out of this stuff. The liquid turns blue, we'll know we're making copper nitrate. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Just let this cook for a little while, see what happens. So while that's cooking in the fume hood, I'm going to wipe out all of these. I think I'll just use this one. I'll earmark it just for stock pot and whatnot. I'm going to wipe all these down to get the last traces of the precious metal dust off of them. And I'm going to store this paper in my rag and filter storage. And we'll process it the next time I do my rags and filters. Well, it's been a few minutes. This has had a chance to warm up a bit. And you can see the liquid's turning blue. So, yeah, we're extracting some copper from it. So that's a good thing. So I'm going to let this cook until I think, I see a little bubbling too, so there may be some bits of copper in there that are dissolving. This is still coming up to temperature too, it's still warming up, let me turn up the heat a little more. Uh, I'm going to let this cook until I don't see any more activity in there, and then um, I will decant off this liquid and we'll put some fresh distilled water and uh, nitric acid on it and keep that up until we don't get any more blue out of it. So, but for now, I'm just going to let this cook. Well, this stuff has come up to a boil. Uh, I'm going to let it boil a little bit. Got a little bit of orange fumes in there. Probably not showing up too well, but they're there. So I'm going to let this boil for a few minutes. Actually, maybe more like 20 or 30. And then uh, I think I'll turn the heat off and let, the, let it cool down enough that uh, the liquid will settle again. Because I ground this stuff up with the mortar and pestle enough that there's a lot of fine stuff in the liquid there, so I'll want to let it settle before I decant off um, the spent nitric acid solution in there. It's getting really blue, so we're taking a lot of copper out. I'm happy about that. So, uh, yeah, just going to let it cook for now. Turn it off in about 30 minutes or so. 
All right, this liquid's had a chance to cool off and settle. It's not so turbid anymore. And, well, surprisingly, it has turned green, which leads me to believe maybe we got something besides copper in here because there was nothing but nitric acid went in there. And uh, copper nitrate is blue. So I'm thinking there might be a little something else dissolved in here. So let's do a stannous chloride test on it. And see what we got. I have a suspicion that the stannous chloride should tell us for sure. Uh-huh. So it goes kind of orange at first. And then it's kind of green around the outside. And it's sort of getting greener. With time, I think we've got palladium in solution, which makes sense because palladium is the only one of the platinum group metals that will dissolve in just nitric acid. And that's all I put in here was nitric acid. So, okay, so we've got some palladium in here. Maybe a fair amount. It's hard to tell. I'm kind of in uncharted territory here. In the past, there hasn't been really enough um, PGMs in uh, my stock pot to worry about but this time it looks like we've got at least some palladium here so okay so i don't think i'm going to do any more nitric acid boils on this stuff um unless i want to segregate the palladium from the other metals in here which might not be a bad idea but i think what i'm going to do is i think i'm just going to decant off this liquid which is my process for getting it out of the fume which was my reason for getting it out of the fume hood, and um, go on to further processing of it. But uh, I will keep this liquid because it apparently has some palladium in it. I have a little set of it's going to come over too. But, uh, yeah, we'll keep this palladium-enriched liquid and figure out what to do with it down the road. Okay. See, this is where I, I got off track. I uh, didn't follow hoax methods. And uh, sure enough, now I've got some liquid with palladium in it here that I need to do something with. Well, we'll figure that out in the future. I'll just set it aside and keep it. Let's put this stuff back in the fume hood and uh, see if we can get any gold out of it. That was job one after all. So palladium will have to wait. Let's see if we can get the gold. There might be some platinum in here too. Hard to say, but uh, like I keep saying, gold is job one. So Let's get this back in the fume hood and uh, see if we can extract any gold from it. And we'll, we'll go back to Hoke's playbook for the most part. I'll explain where I'm going to deviate again in a little while. At least that was my plan. Now I'm starting to wonder if my deviations aren't all that smart. Okay, so what I want to do next is I want to make aqua regia and dissolve as much of what's left in this beaker as I can in aqua regia. Now, Hoke says I should be using a dilute aqua regia for this, all right? So, what I will do is, I'll put in about... ...250 milliliters of deionized water. And then I'll put in about the same amount of muriatic acid. And using dilute aqua regia um, dovetails with my plan. Because I want to get the gold out of here. All right. Put a little heat to it here. Get it warming up again. So 
in Hope's chapter, I believe it's in the chapter on uh, Stockpot, she says that the platinum group metals, palladium and platinum, want to precipitate out of concentrated um, solutions, whereas gold wants to precipitate out of dilute solutions. So here's my cutting plan, and we'll see how well it works. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use her idea of a dilute aqua regia solution. And, of course, there's still a little nitric acid in there, so we've still got, we've got some bubbling going on already. But I'm going to put a little more nitric acid in there. But the gold, whatever gold is in here, should dissolve nicely in a dilute aqua regia solution. Um, hard to say how much of the platinum and palladium will dissolve in it, but the gold should dissolve in it nicely. So there's about uh, four milliliters of extra nitric acid. That's all I'm going to put in for now. I don't want to have an explosive boil over. A lot of fine material in there. And then once we have as much in solution as I can get in solution with this dilute nitric, um, with this dilute aqua regia. What I'll do is I'll denox it. I will cool it with ice and further dilute it, filter it, and then I'll precipitate the gold out. Probably it will be dirty gold. It'll probably be polluted with some palladium, maybe even some platinum, maybe even some other stuff. But remember, job one is getting the gold. I can always re-refine the gold. That's easy enough. And I can precipitate it with copperus and get pure gold. But, uh, oh yeah, we got, we, got, we got a good reaction going, and this hasn't even had a chance to warm up yet. So, yeah. Okay. I'm going to have to keep an eye on this to make sure it doesn't want to boil over. And if I put in further additions of nitric acid, I'm going to have to put them in very slowly. Very slowly indeed. And if this stuff starts turning red, reddish, oh yeah, look at it go. Holy cow. I'm going to have to keep a close eye on this. Um, we might suspect we got some platinum in there if we start seeing a reddish color. Possibly even some other platinum group metals. So, uh, oh, this is this is quite a reaction for cold, cold dilute aqua regia. So... Yeah, keep an eye on it. I got some orange fumes forming already in there. Okay, so we're just going to let this go. It's on very low heat. I'm not going to crank the heat up any higher because this is a pretty good reaction just as it is cold. All right, so we'll just let it cook and see what happens. Well, it's not really showing up on the viewfinder very well, but this is quite green. This has just been sitting here while I got the stuff in the fume hood and made aqua regia quite green. So I'm thinking that this uh, green liquid that we've got over here in the fume hood might have a fair amount of palladium in it. I'm thinking. So I don't know how much we extracted from this stuff. There's probably still plenty in there, I'm thinking. So I don't know. I guess we'll find out. But uh, Something sure reacting in there. Platinum, palladium, gold, hopefully gold. Get that out of the way, and then we can concentrate more on these platinum group metals. That's my plan, anyway. We'll see how it goes. Well, this has been cooking for, oh, I don't know, 20 minutes now. And um, it's taken on a decidedly reddish color, much redder than the usual color of aqua regia just dissolving gold. So I guess we probably got some platinum in there. Maybe some iridium too, possibly. They produce very reddish colors. So yeah, this is definitely uncharted territory for me. I'm not used to having so much in the way of uh, platinum group metals in my stock pot. But I guess if you let it build up for a few years, it's very possible. You can get there. Mm -hmm. Now, the way I handle my stock pot is a pretty significant deviation away from the ho way Hoax says it should be done, too. Uh, for her, processing the stock pot, it's a batch operation, not a continuous one. 
You wait till your stock pot gets full. You put zinc shavings in it, according to her. Precipitate out all the metals. Then you process those metals. And you start over again with an empty stock pot. Well, modern way of doing the stock pot is just to keep copper in it. And the copper will continuously precipitate out metals as they go into the stock pot. And you can decant off the barren liquid and then just keep adding more liquid and more liquid and more liquid. And all of your metals build up on the bottom of the stock pot as a mud, as which you saw back in part one. You know, we got that mud and processed it. So if you keep that continuous process up going, going long enough, I guess eventually you're going to wind up with a fair amount of platinum group metals. I just never had it going that long before. Okay. So the reaction in here seems to be slowing down. I'm going to turn the heat up a bit more because it's really only warm and uh, see if that promotes more bubbling. If not, well, it's still bubbling a little. Um, at some point, I will try adding a little bit more nitric acid to it, but certainly it will be in small increments just in case this stuff wants to take off like a rocket up out of the beaker. And then uh, once we think we've got everything dissolved as, much, as best we can, do a stannous chloride test on it and see what we got there. I suspect there will be gold, but it looks like we're going to have something besides gold, too. Okay. So, well, yeah. It's still bubbling pretty good. I guess the heating element came on when I turned it up. It's bubbling in. So, just, uh, I mean, it's not nearly hot enough to be boiling. That's that's reacting. So, I'm going to let it go and continue to react. we still got some orange fume production, so... Yeah, it's not ready for more nitric yet. So I'm just going to let it go. Well, it's been a little while longer. The reaction seems to have dropped off to pretty much nothing. I mean, we're not quite boiling. But really, I don't see any more bubbling in there. I don't see any more orange fume production. Just sort of a slow, gentle um, convection of the material, the solid material. Let me put in a little bit more nitric acid, and we'll see what happens here. Put it in very slowly. I have been the victim of a few boilovers and near boilovers lately. That will make you cautious. Doesn't seem to be a lot happening. So I'm not going to continue adding it if there's really nothing going on. I might tell me that, well, there's nothing left in there that the nitric acid wants to react with. Ooh, that's hot. But I'm going to let that sit there and cook for a little while longer. I'm going to increase the temperature, too, see if I can bring it up to a low boil. I am not expecting to be able to get everything in there into solution. There will probably be some insoluble crud in there, and there may be some metals like iridium that are very difficult to dissolve in aqua regia. So I'm not going to say I'm not going to try and dissolve everything. I'm not going to worry about it if there's undissolved solids in there. I'm just going to try and get as much of it in solution as I can. And that may be about as much as I can get in solution. I don't know. I'm not seeing a whole lot of activity going on there. Maybe a little bit of slight bubbling. Yeah, a little bit of slight bubbling, but not much. So we're just going to let it cook for a while longer until it looks like there's absolutely nothing going on in there. Like I said, I've increased the temperature. Let's see if I can get it up to a low boil. And if it still looks like there's nothing going on once it's boiled for a while, We'll call it done and move on. Well, this says come up to a low boil. That didn't take too long after turning up the heat. It must have been really close. And now that it's boiling, we are getting some more orange fume production again. So I don't know if that's from the extra heat or just from the extra mixing of the boiling. I suspect it's from the mixing. We're getting good mixing in there. So I'm just going to let this boil 
slowly and lowly until the fumes go away. Maybe we'll try putting a few more drops of uh, nitric acid in and see if that produces any reaction, but certainly we have a reaction going on now, so I'm not going to try and hurry it by adding more nitric right now. We're just going to let it cook. All right, so it's been a while. The orange fume production has stopped. So it fooled me last time into thinking it was done. And I put some more nitric in it, and as it came up to a boil, the reaction got very pronounced. It got a little bit frothy, but no, no danger of boiling over, and we got a lot more orange fume. So let me put a little bit more nitric acid in here. I just want to make sure the reaction is truly done. And we truly have as much stuff in solution as we can get in solution. That's probably half a milliliter right there. I'm not seeing a whole lot. Well, maybe a little bit, just a little bit. Maybe a little bit. I think I'll put another half a milliliter in. And let that cook for a little while. If I don't see a lot of orange fume production or fizzing, I think we've got a little bit of fizzing going on there along with the boiling. But, you know, if I don't see a lot of orange fume production here in the next few minutes, I will assume that this is probably done. So just going to let it cook for now. Well, I don't know if you can see the fumes and the foaminess down there. I mean, that foaminess wasn't there before I put in the nitric acid, so we are still getting a reaction. It's not as strong as last time, but there's still definitely a reaction there. So we'll just let this cook until that stops, and I'll do it again. Half a milliliter, milliliter of nitric acid, and uh, we'll see if we get a reaction. And I'll keep that up until I don't see a reaction. And then... I think we'll be ready to move forward. Well, it's a few minutes later and the reaction has gotten a lot stronger. So it's obviously a delayed reaction after I put the uh, the acid in. But uh, yeah, so this, this may go on a while. So I won't make you watch every edition of, uh, of nitric acid. I'll just slowly put in small additions until it looks like this stuff is done reacting. Okay, especially since there's a delayed reaction, you know, it's it's fooled me a couple of times now into thinking it was about done, but clearly it's not. All right, so we'll be back when I really, really, really think it is done. All right, I think it's really, really done. My last addition of acid, which I did off camera, really produced very little, if any, reaction. So, and I've waited about 10 minutes. We've got a little bit of orange fumes, but nothing like in the past, okay? Just barely anything. Very, very little fizzing. Seems to just be boiling quietly. So I've got a saturated solution of sulfamic acid here, which I'm going to use to denox this. And it almost certainly has excess nitric acid in it because, like I say, the last addition really didn't accomplish much. So, let's try to denox this. I'm going to turn the heat off. Yeah, there's some excess nitric acid in there. That's what happens when you add sulfamic acid to nitric acid. It destroys it, but it produces nitrous oxide is one of the byproducts. And if you have a serious overnox condition and you put this stuff in too fast, you will get a massive bubble over. But I don't think we're that overnoxed. Okay, good. All right. I am going to, just to be on the safe side, wash the rest of this sulfamic acid in there. Make sure we are good and denoxed. I'm going to go get some ice. We'll ice this down and start it cooling and diluting. And then uh, we should be able to filter it. So let me go get some ice.
All right, before I ice this down, I want to do a quick stannous chloride test. I actually wanted to do this before I did the denoxy, but I forgot. Yeah, that's not the usual color I'm used to for aqua regia solution. Yeah, that's a lot more orange than what I'm used to. I suppose it could just be, you know, a really concentrated gold solution, but I got a feeling we got something besides gold in here. Alright, so let me... We move the camera and we'll do our stannous chloride test. Ah, the perils of working outside. Got debris in here. It's just in a couple of seconds it's been sitting here. Something the wind blew something in. Hopefully not gonna make a difference. Oh. Yeah, okay. So we've got a really strong indication for gold here, for sure. But there's other stuff there, too. It, it's kind of orange and green around the edges, so certainly I think there's some palladium there still. Maybe some platinum based on the color of the liquid. It's possible we got some platinum in there, too. Okay, so let me get back over here and get this stuff iced down. Okay, here we go with some ice. I'm going to put a fair amount in. I want to dilute this stuff as well as cooling. Definitely want to dilute it because it will be easier to get gold out of a dilute solution. Remember, I was talking about that earlier. Hope says gold wants to uh, precipitate from a dilute solution. The platinum and palladium want to precipitate from concentrated solutions. So I'll move that over there where it's cooler, and this can cool down and dilute, and uh, let's see here. Yeah, I diluted it a lot, because we had about 500 milliliters of liquid in here, and we are going to be up to around 1,200 here, so more than double. It was already a dilute aqua regia solution, so we're diluting it even more. So, okay, we'll just let this uh, cool down, dilute, and settle. There's still solids in there, so we'll let them settle to the bottom before filtration. That will make filtration go a lot easier. Um, in fact, it's very late in the day. It's almost supper time. I may just leave this until tomorrow and pick up where I left off here tomorrow morning. That's probably the way it's going to work. Okay, see you tomorrow. All right, so it's the next morning, and I thought I'd get an early start, jump out here, get this stuff filtered and drop the gold out of it. But, you know, I'm looking at the color of this stuff and this is really an odd color for aqua regia. So I decided to do another Stannis chloride test on it this morning and I got an odd result. And I'm gonna re recreate this for you right now. This odd result test. Okay. So we put a little stannous chloride on it, and we get a bright orange, dark orange, dark bright orange, whatever you want to call it. Now this looked like it had gold in it yesterday. It really did. Um, doesn't look like gold today. Looks like platinum. Maybe because I diluted it by almost three to one. Maybe it was platinum all along and just kind of looked like gold because the test was so dark. I'm not certain. Hmm. So this is kind of throwing me for a loop here. I don't know exactly what to do. And uh, if there was any gold in here, is it now back on the bottom for some reason? I mean, I think any other metals in here would have been less reactive than gold. Let me check on that real quick. Yeah, so here's my much abused copy of uh, the reactivity series of metals I keep out here in my workshop. Uh, it's stained, it's had notes written on it, it's crinkled up. But, yeah, gold is more reactive than platinum. 
So if there was any undissolved platinum in here, it should not have cemented out the gold. So maybe there was really little or no gold there to begin with. I don't know. So I am thinking, hmm, I think and we've mostly got, maybe I've been doing a much better job of keeping the gold out of my stock pot than I thought. Um, it's very possible my use of temporary stock pots to, uh, to hold my gold recovery liquids and occasionally I'll throw a little bit of uh, SMB in it to make sure any, any gold in there slowly precipitates out over time. Maybe... I am doing a good job of keeping gold out of my stock pot. I don't know. So what I think I will do, since I was getting set up for filtering anyway, is I think I will filter this liquid like I was planning. And we'll throw some SMB in it and just see what happens. See if there is any gold in here. I mean, I can't believe I've got no gold in my stock pot. That doesn't make sense. There ought to be a little bit. But maybe we got a lot of platinum and a lot of palladium. And just a little cold. I can almost believe that. So, uh, yeah, so let me filter this. We'll throw some SMB in it and see what, if anything, happens. So let me get set up for filtering. All right, let's uh, get this stuff filtered. Get my vacuum pump turned on. It's a nice, clear liquid. It ought to filter pretty quickly until I get the solids on the bottom in. And I just disturbed them by tilting it. No, yeah, they're settling. What I might do is give those solids another aqua regia treatment. I said I wasn't going to be too anal about trying to dissolve absolutely everything in here. But, you know, I wonder where the gold went. At least I thought there was gold here. Maybe there really wasn't. Yeah, it's coming through nice and clear. Good. All right. Let me tilt this over so all that sediment doesn't move again the next time I pick it up. Okay. So, this is going to take a little while. It's coming through pretty quickly, but it's still going to take a little while. So, we'll be back when it's done. Darn, that's an odd color for aqua regia. Some days are just hard, let me tell you. I noticed this was going pretty slow, even though the filter wasn't plugged up because I didn't have the solids in it yet. Turned out my vacuum pump wasn't sucking. Well, why wasn't the vacuum pump sucking? Because it wasn't blowing. Because a mud dauber had built a nest in the exhaust of it, which I had to clean out. Then my vacuum pump worked again. So now I've got all the liquid through. I'm going to put the solids through into this filter. I was thinking about leaving the solids in here and uh, giving them another aqua regia treatment, but I could do that with them in the filter. This way I'll get all of whatever liquid is in them out of those solids. So we'll just let this continue to drain through until it's uh, dry up here in the filter. And then we'll see what we will see with this stuff. It's further diluting it with a little water here. Wash stuff through the filter. So if there is any gold in here, it should be pretty ready to come out of solution because this is pretty dilute now. So let me wash the filter a little more. I'll wash that beaker over there. Um, we'll put the liquid back in it. I'll meet you in the fume hood. We'll put some SMB on it and see what if anything happens. So here's what's left up here in the filter. That is an odd color. It's very gray, whatever it is. Uh, tan even might be a better description. Khaki, I don't know. Take your pick. I'm a guy. I know about six colors. That's it. My wife always makes fun of my lack of uh, color knowledge. But uh, yeah, that is an odd color. Uh, oxidized platinum group metals. I don't know. 
leave a comment. Let me know what you think it is. And uh, is it is it worthy of another um, aqua regia treatment? I don't know. Certainly I will set it aside and decide what, if anything, to do with it. Leave a comment on that, too. All right. This is pretty much dried out. Let me uh, get it in the beaker and get it in the fume hood. Well, I was thinking that this video was going to culminate today with me precipitating some gold out of solution, but quite honestly, I don't know what's going to happen here. Get the fume hood going. We'll put some stump out by Bodhi in here, which contains sodium metabisulfite, which, if there is gold in here, it should precipitate it. Now, you might be asking yourself, if you just want gold, why aren't you using copperus, right? Well, believe me, I asked myself that question, too. I thought about that long and hard last night. Um, because I was expecting to just be precipitating mainly gold out of this, maybe gold. Well, we are getting a bit of a color change. Something's happening. Maybe there is some gold here. I don't know. Um... Yeah, okay, something's precipitating out of solution. Maybe there is gold there, it's just masked by the platinum, I don't know. Anyway, the reason I'm using SMB instead of copperus, yes, I know copperus is a, a somewhat more selective precipitate. It would just bring the gold down, leave platinum and palladium in solution. Now, the SMB will mostly bring down gold, but it'll also bring down a little bit of the platinum and palladium. So whatever gold I get out of this is going to be a little bit contaminated, a couple percent maybe, with those uh, PGM metals. There might also be some copper left in here because I didn't finish my copper removal boils when I saw how much palladium I was getting out. But I'm, I'm, I'm worried about adding iron to this, and copper is iron sulfate. So I don't know how the iron in solution will affect the later stages of trying to get the PGMs out of this stuff. So we're going to stick with SMB because when the SMB goes into the acid, it breaks down into sulfur dioxide, into two components, sulfur dioxide, number one, and table salt, the other. And, you know, the sulfur dioxide, well, that can, that can be removed from solution easy enough just by heating it up. It'll boil out quickly. And the table salt, well, I'm not worried about that. That's not really going to affect anything. There's plenty of chloride in here already. So, But I don't know what adding iron to this will do. So we're going to go with the SMB. We'll see what precipitates out. Hopefully that's gold. I'm hoping that's gold. That was a weird colored aqua regia, and that was a weird colored stannous chloride reaction. But hopefully that's gold. I've got my filter here that I use to filter this stuff. I'm going to put it in here for safekeeping next to this uh, palladium solution. And we'll just let this stuff sit and uh, see what settles out. We'll come and look at it again later. Well, here it is the next day. And we've managed to precipitate something out of this stuff. Um, we've still got kind of an odd color left to the liquid here. It's sort of, if I look through it, it's, it's sort of yellow green. So, uh, yeah, not sure what's left in it, but what I am sure of is I want to capture this precipitate and, uh, then we'll look at what's left in the liquid here. So I think I'm going to get set up to filter this, and we will filter, we'll capture all this stuff in a filter, and then uh, see about further processing it, and see about what's left in the liquid. So let me get it filtered first, and uh, move on from there. Alrighty, let's get this stuff filtered. Uh, plug the pump in. No mud dauber nests. All right, good. The stuff in the bottom of this beaker, it looks like gold. 
I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it's mostly gold. Probably got some contamination. Probably got some uh, PGMs mixed in with it, I would imagine. Maybe some copper. But uh, it certainly looks like gold. And it settled fairly quickly, which is nice. It's uh, Yeah, looking good. Not a huge amount of it by the looks of it, but that's okay. I've been trying hard to keep gold out of my stock pot, so maybe I'm actually succeeding. All right, let me get this stuff filtered. Get everything in here captured on the filter, and then we'll go from there, decide what to do next. Well, I'll give you a quick look at the solids before I wash them into the filter. There's, there's really, I would say, not a huge amount of material in the bottom of this beaker. So, yeah, I'm thinking there wasn't really all that much gold in this stuff, but we might have a reasonable amount of platinum. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to wash this into the filter, and then uh, we'll decide what to do next. So here's what's in the filter. I mean, not, not a huge amount of material. Um, it sure looks like gold, fine gold, but it's, it's got the color. I mean, it's not a fine black powder. It's got a little bit of a, you know, the brown color of gold to it. So, okay, so I think we've got some gold here. And we've got a lot of uh, yellow-green liquid down here. And, uh, all right, so let me dump this back into a beaker, and we will decide where to go next. All right, so here we are. So from left to right, we've got the original material I started with, that whatever's left of it in the filter over there. We've got uh, this greenish liquid, which shows a strong positive for palladium from doing uh, nitric acid boils on this stuff, which may have been a mistake. I don't know. You know, uh, se segregating the palladium may not have been a bad thing. We've got this material on the filter in here, which um, looks a whole lot like gold, which we precipitated out of this solution here. And as this is sitting, I can see a little bit more stuff has fallen to the bottom of it. So we've got a little bit more precipitate in there. So the interesting question is, what's left in here in this uh, yellowish, greenish? It's a weird color. I don't even know how to describe the color of this stuff. I don't know. Well, let's see what we've got in here. All right, so let's get a little bit on our spoon. And then let's hit it with some fresh stannous chloride solution. All right, well, first let me zoom in so you can see the reaction, all right? So you can get an idea of what's going on here. Hit it with a little bit of stannous, and look at that orange color that forms immediately. And it darkens, and then... It starts getting greenish around the edges. I hope that's all showing up. Um, I'm thinking there's a whole lot of palladium in here is what I'm thinking. Maybe some platinum too. But I'm thinking there's still a whole lot of palladium in here. I'm thinking we did not get all the palladium out with the uh, nitric acid boil that I did. Yes, yeah, it's, it's turning quite green now. So I'm thinking palladium. Maybe a little platinum left in here. Uh, maybe a little bit more gold has precipitated out. I'm thinking the gold we got is probably a little bit contaminated with PGMs. Probably got some palladium in it. Maybe a little platinum. So, where to go from here? Well, we'll start off by refining this stuff and seeing if we can make it reasonably pure. Get the PGMs out of it and drop some pure gold. Oh yeah, this is getting really, really green. Let me zoom in on that again. Really, really green. I hope that's showing up. 
So I'm thinking palladium. Yeah, definitely. And then, after we refine this stuff, we'll figure out what to do with these two solutions. Apparently, there's a reasonable amount of palladium here. So maybe we will figure out how to drop some palladium. That's going to have to be in the next video, though, because I don't have the chemicals necessary on hand. I was not expecting to have this much in the way of PGMs in my stock pot this time. I figured it was just going to be a minor minor trace, like in the past, and go back in the stock pot and let it build up. But no, we have a lot of PGMs here. So I've had to order some new chemicals that I don't normally keep on hand, and it's going to be a while before they arrive. So in the next video in this series, we will tackle dealing with the PGMs as well as refining the gold and making it a much purer. Okay. Well, I hope you found this video interesting, educational, informative, inspirational, whatever. Give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to see my future videos, including the ones where I continue working on this stuff. But there's lots of other stuff coming down the pike, lots more gold and silver recovery videos, so subscribe to see those. Check out my other two channels, Electro Geek 64, where there's electronics and retro computing, and Mike's Lapidarian Fossils, where, you know, there's rock hounding, rock hunting, rock tumbling, and fossil hunting, and fossil prep, and all that other good stuff. Uh, links in the video description. All right. There are also links in the video description to all of the equipment and chemicals I'm using here. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.